All right, Adam, week, uh, week two starting. Um, teams are 4-0. One team is 4-0. Other teams have played all four games. Let's talk a little bit about the team that is 4-0. Valparaiso starting off 4-0 start, surprisingly. Yeah, I mean, Mike, when, we're, when we talked a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about Drake and Indiana State and the great non-conference, all the great momentum they had coming in. Now those two teams aren't even going to be at the top of the list. We're talking about Valparaiso. Valparaiso wasn't one that, you know, if you talk to folks around the Valley, there weren't a lot of conversations going around about Valpo and Coach Matt Lodick. Obviously, they had the non-conference win against UNLV, but, man, they've been impressive through four conference games, got two road wins. How about their defense? I mean, it was good in the non-conference, but it's even taken a step up in conference play, only giving up 58 points per game, leading the league in field goal percentage difference and or defense, excuse me. And you know what, what's been so impressive to me when, when you look at that team is their balance. Five guys in double figures. And even though Fizikas now is out with an ankle injury, missed a, a game and a half or so, there's, there's just other guys stepping in. And because of that balance offensively, they just live to fight another day and a different guy steps up. So, you know, I, I've really, I really applaud Matt Loddick and his move moving into conference play, switching Lavender and Evelyn to come off the bench after that Texas A&M game. It, they've been playing really well since their rotations are really clicking. Yeah, you, you mentioned that. And they, they, of course, were without Fazekas against Southern Illinois. Yeah. Popping Kaiser to play that, that four spot. And they, they haven't missed a beat. And you, you've got those two guys coming off the bench that have a lot of starting experience. Yeah, and how about Freeman just as a freshman coming in and playing really well? I mean, he's just, he's just been a really good scorer, getting in double digits as a freshman. And, of course, what started off the season, it's great to be good. Sometimes it's great to be lucky, too. The half-court shot that we saw on ESPN from Golder to beat Illinois State, there were a lot of surprise Redbirds out there, but that was a heck of a win for Valpo. Well, you mentioned Freeman. He's leading the league in steals. We've had just three yeah. freshmen in the last 40 years that have led the league in either – Points, rebounds, steals, and assists. And he's, he's right now, he's on top of the league in, in steals per game. So congratulations to him. A, a quick start Absolutely. for him. Let's talk about the matchup on Tuesday night. Loyola playing uh, Valpo. Loyola, yeah. the defending champs. They're 3-1. Three and, three and one. They're right behind him in the league standings right now. The big matchup in Gentile Arena on Tuesday. Yeah, I don't think anybody pegged that one at the start of conference play. Like, oh, yeah, this is going to be the game. We kind of saw that this past weekend with Loyola against Illinois State. I mean, that was the one that was billed uh, preseason number one, preseason number two in the conference. And that game definitely didn't disappoint. For Valpo, they're finishing off their swing in Illinois, playing against pretty much every Illinois school that the, that the Valley has. But, you know, I, I think with Loyola, they've just gotten back to who they are a little bit. Obviously, there's one game against Evansville. I'm just going to call that an aberration, right? They, they were not themselves. Uh, the, they didn't necessarily play or weren't really in sync offensively. Custer struggled a little bit in that one, but they got back to the identity of who they are. They play really, really good defense, and they make you work for everything. They have timely scoring. They don't make a ton of mistakes. Where they're struggling right now, though, still, it's really three guys. It's Custer, it's Towns, it's Crutwig. Those guys are playing really well game after game after game. They haven't found that fourth consistent player. For them to finish at the top of the conference, they're going to need someone, someone like a Lucas Williamson, to step into that role. But, man, those three guys with their Final Four experience, they're still pretty tough. And you mentioned Lucas. He, he just came back from the broken hand. Yeah. His first game was against Evansville. Probably going to take him a couple of games to get back into full rhythm. But what do you think about his ability to contribute. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. He's he's a guy that's versatile. He can score from the perimeter. He can score inside. He's long on defense, too, and he's a good athlete, which gives them, you know, a little bit of a different flavor because when you look at Towns, he's six foot four. You look at Custer, maybe six one, six two. Those guys aren't necessarily great athletes at their position. They're both pretty good athletes. They move around pretty well. Lucas Williamson offers maybe a little different flavor of that with the length in his arms. But what they really need is they just need a consistent guy to fill in that role. It's been Cooper Kafis at times this year with his ability to knock down threes from the outside. But on that wing, and from that wing position, you know, they lose a lot from last year in terms of consistency and defense in Ben Richardson. They need somebody to step into that role and be that 8-12 to 12 point a game scorer. Okay, we talked about the big matchup on Tuesday, 4-0 against 3-1. and one. one team that surprisingly is 0-4 is Bradley. They were picked fourth in the, in the preseason poll. And uh, what, what does Bradley need to do to get back on track? Yeah, I mean, 0-4 start, that surprised a lot of people. And I know Coach Brian Wardo's got to be frustrated with that. His team continues to play hard. They've just been inconsistent and haven't been able to get over the hump. You know, when I picked Bradley in my, in my personal poll, I picked him third. And they're, they're, playing, they're playing hard, which is, which is hard to see. It's just timely mistakes 
and timely breakdowns on the defensive end, uncharacteristic of that group. I don't expect 0-4 to be something that's a trend to continue. I expect that team to bounce back. They're too good to be at the bottom of the standings. Yeah, historically, start 0-4. It's a little tough to get off of that Thursday opening round game of Arch Madness, but I think the Braves probably have enough talent to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Adam, thank you again for visiting us with us. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Mike. Have a good one.